Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Dreaming Forward podcast. My name is Shalon Johnson. And I'm Kaylin Wilson. And we are very excited to talk to you all about our leadership and management different. So Kaylin, you want to get us started? Yes. First of all, they are very different, but they're also needed. So just like in the previous episode, we talked to you all about how bureaucracy plays a part. Management plays a part in good leadership and good leaders are also good managers. So let's just get into it. There has been a growing trend probably for the last 10 years, maybe, at pitting management and leadership against each other. We're not managers. We're only leaders. And if you're not a good manager, uh, then you're doing leadership right. It's not an either or, right? It's not black and white. There are differences that are needed that complement one another. They're not mortal enemies. So Shalon, if you think about your experience with management, Mm -hmm. when have you seen good managers before? Honestly, I wouldn't say that I've seen good managers from senior leadership, per se. Mm -hmm. I've seen good managers on smaller teams. Like if you have a project management team, for example, I've seen really good project managers. Mm -hmm. However, they aren't always leaders, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So project managers is like you have your scheduling, your timelines, your project charter, you know, you're keeping up with the status update meetings, the kickoff meetings, go live, all of these things, right? But sometimes it's such a high pressured role that people crack under that pressure yep. and ends up not leading or not leading successfully because of that. Let's hone in though on what it means to be a good project manager. Cause I think there are some nuggets there that'll help us understand how managers show up. So when I've seen great management, it was people who prioritize documentation and appropriate mm-hmm. archival of critical information for the team. Mm-hmm. Good managers are also highly responsive. So time off requests, Um, Whether that's sick leave, personal leave, even responding to needs. Managers are good at timing and pacing. I think good managers are also very good at managing details. So they can pay attention to every little part and know where the pieces are at any given time. That's an underrated skill. And if you think about the flip side, so now if we transition into thinking about leadership, leadership is often... Big picture thinking in many ways, it is a motivator. In many ways, it is setting the vision and the tone, but those aren't the concrete pieces that actually get stuff done. They can get you started, they can help you stay the course, right? Emotionally, cognitively, but they aren't. I don't necessarily always look to people who are just skilled in leadership Mm -hmm. to manage details. I think that's the best way I could put it. Right, right. Leaders are are like coaches when -hmm. you think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, They trust you to get the answers. Exactly. Yeah, they set the tone for you to then do your thing quite autonomously. Right. They they talk to you and help you to get to those answers by yourself. Mm, So it's not necessarily that I'm going to tell you what the next step is. But I'm going to lead you in that direction. I'm going to coach you to that direction. A manager might say, here are the steps to get to the next stop. And they'll give you all those details. Here's the website. Here is the here are the credentials you need, like that type of thing. Yeah, I think that's super important because if you think about what people enjoy seeing it's always leadership it's the charisma it yeah. is the warm fuzzies sometimes it's the people who even challenge you who can critique really well right good leaders mm-hmm. are good at critiquing but when i think about the people who have helped me to become who have helped me to challenge myself It's been the people who were very detail oriented like that and who made sure that I was taken care of. This is a way we could think about it. Sometimes good managers are underappreciated. So when you have a really good manager, they help 
things flow so well that you almost don't even know that they're there. Yeah. Mm, that's a good way to think about that. Because I'm thinking about a previous manager that we had. And if we put in time off request or had a question about a policy or had a question where to find something about benefits or had a question about where to go to answer something when it was a company-wide meeting, when we needed to be aware of something, directions to a place, that person was on it, on it, on it. And they weren't going to stop until they knew that you had it and understood it. Yep. But in terms of leadership, boldness, bravery, willingness to confront their leader sometimes willingness to kind of buck trends and innovate that wasn't quite there. Yeah. And if I think about, if I think about what I really needed from that job, I probably did need more of a manager than a leader. I would say, I think I needed more of a leader at mm. that job mm -hmm. because there was so much tension at one point. Mm -hmm. And I think that we would have been able to kind of surpass that tension if we had someone standing up for us. And in those instances, you really need a leader to be able to stand up for your team and speak to another leader. And so that brings up for me conflict management. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when people hear about conflict, they think it's always negative, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to even even though it's uncomfortable at times, like you have to be able to step in and say, no, this is not right. Or no, this is this is how it needs to go because my team um, needs to feel comfortable yeah. with doing this. You know, we need to boost employee morale, whatever it is. Um, you need a leader to really be able to step in and say, no. Here's my thought to that. And I think this gets into another context for the differences between leadership and management okay. the team is nestled within the organization and the organization's culture will always eat your individual style up oh, if you're yeah. not careful so when i think good. about that experience for us even if that person had pushed back against the one person that they could have influence with the system of our work was set up for you just come in, put your head in front of the computer, do your work and walk away. So would it have been worth it for them as a person who wanted to be in that organization for some time to really fight against and push against and create conflict in order to make it functional for the few people on the team who needed innovation? Girl, <laughs> I don't know why. See, this is my growing up in the 90s coming up because yeah. as you started thinking, first of all, I'm thinking that person was a Decepticon. <laughs> 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 then I started thinking about the Power Rangers, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> you got your team of people trying to fight against this one bad yeah. guy, right? Yeah. And while most of the time on Power Rangers... The team won, the Power Rangers won. Um, it was never like that at that job. No. And that's the reality. No. Like sometimes you, even though you're standing up for yourself or your team, you're not always going to win. But for me, I find power in seeing my leader stand up for me, regardless mm. of what that outcome is, because that would boost my employee morale. Mm -hmm. Now, I might end up leaving anyway, because that's just me. <laughs> And that's but what I'm saying. It feels good to see somebody stand up for you. And that's what I'm saying. So, all right. So here's the aha moment here, y'all. When choosing whether to show up as a leader or a manager, you have to decide, is it more important for you to have the validation and affirmation of your team, the validation and affirmation of your leader, or the validation and affirmation of the company's culture? And this goes back to understanding your own career plan, because if you know your team would be satisfied for you, but in our case, we were going to leave anyway, it wouldn't have helped that person to push against the system right. to the chagrin of their leader and the company's culture. Likewise, if I know that my direct reports, like I might be on my way out and I just want to keep a solid network of people who could offer me, you know, references, I might be willing to push against my leader and want my team to boost me up. So that's a choice that you have to make. 
And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. It's going to be different in every situation. It might be different at the same company, just at different times. But it's going to be very important for you to make that assessment, have that situational awareness, do that environmental scan to kind of see what the what the vibe is, what the temperature mm -hmm. is. But here's what's even more important. Like, let's let's dig a little bit deeper, because if you can remember, that person ended up doing what? Leaving. leaving the whole department mm -hmm. and demoting themselves. Mm -hmm. That is, it's good, but it's also telling on what type of leader we actually had. <clears throat> so it's good because that person was able to assess themselves. They were mm -hmm. very stressed over this. Um, and so eventually came to the conclusion that they would not only change departments, go into another title, mm -hmm. but also take a demotion. Right. And so having that assessment to say, this is not for me, mm -hmm. it can be good if that's an honest assessment. Mm -hmm. It could also be bad because that person has so many great qualities. I was that they that. did have the opportunity to be a great leader. Unfortunately, they just weren't under a great leader to coach them to great leadership. There we go. Right. And so, I, that's important, too, because if you so to the audience, you got to know where your mentorship and sponsorship is coming from. Yeah. Who's supporting you? Who's feeding you the information that you need to be great? Because if you don't have people in your corner supporting you, it's going to be a hard road for you to fill in your skills gaps. You're going to have to have a lot of drive to do things yourself or just go without, right? Just be like, okay, well, I guess I'm just not going to know that. And if that's okay to you, because sometimes... There have been some opportunities where I was like, I'm not building skills to do this job better. They gonna get what they gonna get. Yeah. Because yeah. I've I've maxed out on what I'm gonna offer these people. And then there were other jobs where I'm like, oh, I will even pay to go learn something to do this job better because mm -hmm. it was important to me at that time. So when you're thinking about, okay, is it my leadership skills that need work or is it my management skills that need work? You'll have to think through. What are your gaps? Can my leader support me? And do I have even peer mentors? You can pay attention to your peers. Again, most people are really good at one or the other. Like, I'll be honest, I'm a great leader, I think, not a great manager. <clears throat> I love big picture ideas, love visioning, but I need support. I can do management. It's not my vibe. I actually feel drained when I do it. Shalon, I think, is a lot more balanced at being both. She has really good management skills, which is why she's such a good project manager. Again, once you start talking details, I could feel myself dissociating. Like, I'm just like, Ooh, totally but wait, checking out. But wait. That's, <laughs> so here's the thing with that, right? Mm -hmm. You've evolved to that point. At one point, you were a great manager, at that Ooh. point where you were like, oh, that hex code is wrong. Yeah, you got Calibri and Bookman oh. Old Style. You know, at that point, you were a good manager. But I think that you have so many credentials now. You have so much experience that you've evolved more into being a leadership and needing that support. And so that's important, mm -hmm. too. You don't always need the balance because in a lot of organizations, when you get to the point that you are currently at in your career, you're going to have that support for you. Mm. So that's a big aha moment. You got me thinking, girl. <laughs> <laughs> because you also have to know your company to know if that support is going to be possible. Because when right. I think about some jobs I've had, they weren't going to hire any more staff. They weren't going to move people to different departments. They weren't even going to, you know, reallocate people's time even just a couple hours a week to do stuff so most of my jobs it was quite literally all on me so you're right I did have to be both and when I think about those jobs like having to be a 50 50 split was so draining yeah you burn yourself out you will burn yourself out so a way we can tie this point together is that decide your split Mm. Like, do how much of a leader do you need to be to be effective in this job? How much of a manager do you need to be to be effective at this job? But also, how much of a leader do you want to be? 
right. how much of a manager do you want to be? If you want to be a manager and focus more on like the details, the admin side of things, the the following up, the seeing you through the course, do that. Find roles that will empower you to do that. Find companies whose yeah. cultures will empower you to do that. If you want to be more of like the vision person, the, the cheerleader, the coach, if you want to focus more on the big picture side of it, if you want to focus more on morale and culture, find a company, find a position that will empower you to be that leader. Yeah. yeah. But how do you find that company, right? So let's scale yeah. it all the way back. We need to get to a point where we're asking questions in the interview that we actually want to know the answers to. Yes. I know there are so many lists of interview questions and things like that out there on Google and people just kind of choose some. Mm -hmm. No, you need to be more cognizant of what do I really care about? And so in your case, Caitlin, you care about you need a lot of support. So when you're going to see your interviews, you need to say, how much support is designated for this role? Do mm -hmm. I have an admin team? Do I have an admin person? You know, those targeted questions, because if you're someone who doesn't want to manage all of the details, you really shouldn't be accepting positions where you're tasked with managing all the details because you're going to end up looking for another job very quickly. Why are you telling my business, though? I ain't telling your business, <laughs> Because, no, because it's true. Because if we're going to be honest, like, some companies haze you into performing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they're going to purposely make your life hellish so that you can behave the way they want you to behave. Yeah. And you have to know yourself. And see if you could take the pressure. But what is that called? Period. Abuse. <laughs> Where's HR? Because... <laughs> I need to file a report. It's HR abusing people, girl. Quit playing. That's what we well, said. So listen, for my HR people who listening in, let's be real. You know who this person is going to be reporting to. Like, I've had people tell me in interviews. When we on them little intro recruiting calls, even if I don't ask, they'll say, look, I'm going to be real with you. This manager, they'll say they're very direct, very bold. They like to push against the grain. Read, I think this person could be unlikable. And that was my clue. <laughs> and they wasn't wrong. Like when I got in there, that person was hell to deal with. Mm. If you're a recruiter, if you're designing these interview questions, setups, if you're coaching the hiring manager when talking to people, encouraging them to be honest. Another side to this too. <sighs> Managers are typically much more adept at being able to perform through difficult personalities. Mm -hmm. So because managers tend to be very detail, detail and outcome oriented, right? They can just go heads down in a task and just do, 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 get it to the end. Yeah. With leaders... Because so much of how they do what they do depends on these nebulous concepts like culture and personality or morale, they tend, in my experience, to be a little bit more sensitive to relationships, tone, attitude, connection, the intensity and quality of relationships. Mm -hmm. And if you know that you're more of a leader than a manager and don't plan to conform to an environment that requires you to be different, you need to look for an opportunity that satisfies that. Don't set yourself right. up for failure. But you know why they're being more cognizant on their tone and, and you know how they're behaving and things like that? Because it's all politics. Like a lot of times... Mm -hmm. Those positions, they have to put on this this cape or what is it called? A mask. They have to put on this mask. Yes. Because it's politics. They have to look a certain way. I'm thinking you know? about that same person. Yes. Like the amount of stuff. And I, you know what? That is so The amount of stuff that that person had to put up with, even from us, like if we're going to be honest, because sometimes we'll be whining and complaining yeah. about things. Like, yeah. we weren't easy. Wow, this is not going to change. So just do what I'm <laughs> asking you to do. That, like for real, that takes a lot of stamina. Yeah. That yeah. takes a lot of stamina. And when I think about myself, like as a person who was way more leader than manager, I do not have the patience for that. The, no. 
I tell people, even in consulting, I can only deal with maybe one or two difficult personalities that you got. I don't mind a being there. I know that that's a necessary part of the work. But mm-hmm. if you know nobody wants this, please don't sign this engagement agreement. Yeah. Like, let's not even yeah. do this to ourselves. Yeah. Let me just do individual coaching with the people who are already on board. Maybe we do some background strategic planning sessions. But don't set all of us up for failure with people who don't want to be around it. Because I know it's yeah. not my desire to navigate through all of that muck like that. Yeah. It's not only that, though. It is. It's because you are. um, You really desire outcomes. And so mm. if you play it in my face and preventing okay. me from finishing my job. <laughs> Now you're messing up my data points. Okay, so I think, <laughs> I'm thinking of somebody specific. <laughs> that's how it is for you. But for me, I feel that way. When people mess up my timeline, yeah, that drives me crazy. I know like, it does. That's what I'm saying. You 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 be on it with that management piece. Like, listen, y'all, Shalon gets people in order, and it sometimes she don't even have to say a word. Like, I think it's like the mama and her. Like she'll just like give a look or get quiet on the call, and then people will start. No, 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 I meant right. <laughs> like, and then I'll come in and be like, "Well, no, we meant that." And like her face never changes, and people know like, I don't no, do a whole right. lot of talking. I yeah, don't know. Like <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. But it is <laughs> it's so needed because sometimes it is playtime over. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about what's happening in the workforce right now, in life, all of these crazy messages that we're seeing every day, horrible news stories, we are being inundated with so much. Playtime has been over at work. Playtime has been over in these companies. Playtime has been over in the marketplace. Yeah. People are not playing with the products and services that you offer them. People are not playing with being respected and treated well at work. And so while people can deal with an honest leader who has work to do, they cannot deal with someone who is gaslighting them into believing that they are showing up differently than they actually are. Right. So again, if you know, hey, I'm more manager than leader, my team doesn't need that, delegate things. Yeah. And then appropriately recognize and reward the efforts that people put in. Because that's another part, right? You should be sharing credit for what people contribute to the group. Right. If they are contributing strong management skills that are taking the team to the next level, and you know that that's a gap for you, recognize them for that. It's not a secret. I'm sure everybody else knows that. If you see that person showing up as a visionary and a leader in ways that you can't recognize them for that. Right. It's important. People will appreciate that. You'll boost your retention if you do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that step one is going back to what you were saying about finding what your percentage is. What percentage Mm -hmm. of leader do you want to be? What percentage of manager you want to be? So first identify that. The second part would be to do a gap analysis on yourself, Mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. Like, where where can I improve and what am I missing? Is it a certificate? Do you need a mentor? Do you need more experience in something that you don't have experience in in your industry? Like, find out what that is. Yeah. Um, And then the third thing is get to work because everybody Mm -hmm. has something that they need to work on. Yeah. So after you do that assessment... Start checking off um, things on your to-do list. I want to make a note about that as we close, because I've done that, I think, three times in my career. And it wasn't an overnight process. It took it years right. to get to where I was trying to go. But the pride that I felt and looking back at where I was and then being intentional about saying, I want to get here, here, here and do this, this, this is immeasurable yeah and it's a muscle you build so as you do this over and over again iterate on it grow it you grow your muscles just like you don't turn into (laughs) the hulk overnight right you might start out a little scrawny with it but that intentionality draws the opportunities 
to stretch to you and you need that. So I'm looking forward to seeing how y'all are going to show up as both leaders and managers. Drop a note in the comments and let us know, are you more a leader? Are you more manager? What floats your boat? And who do you like to report to more? Do you like to report more so to a leader or to a manager? Tell us in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and share this uh, with all of the people who you know could use this message. All right. See y'all next time. Bye.